P transfer chapter one, lecture two. In this lecture, we'll talk about the first law of thermo. So first, let's take a look at the energy balance for a closed system. Closed systems have what's known as a fixed mass. So typically what you have is you have an object that, that has a specific heat, uh, initial mass, and it's changing, changing temperature. So you can calculate the, the heat out of it simply as just the mass times the specific heat at constant volume times the change in temperature. So that's basically uh, the first law becomes the following. E in minus E out is equal to delta U. Remember delta U is the internal uh, energy of, the, of the, the system we're talking about. And that's just going to equal M times the specific heat at constant volume times delta T. Now for, since stationary systems do no work, then you know this simply becomes Q equals MCV delta T. So for fluid flowing through a, a pipe, uh, that's what's called, you know, at steady velocity, that's just what's uh, called a steady flow system. So two terms we need to be familiar with. One is what's called a mass flow rate. The mass flow rate is given by the density times the cross-sectional area times the velocity. Now here we kind of have to be careful because we, you know, later on here we're going to, this big V is going to be a volume flow rate. So, uh, our book, uh, unfortunately, kind of messes some of these formulas up. So I've tried to be more clear than, than he has in, in, in a few cases here. So M dot is the mass flow rate. It'd be measured in kilograms per second. So you have the density times the area times the velocity. And if you multiply these out, uh, the units turn out to be kilograms per second. Now, if we want the volume flow rate, that's the uh, v, uh, big V dot. So the units here is going to be cubic meters per second. So that's the velocity times the cross-sectional area. So now check the units here. So velocity is meters per second uh, times the cross-sectional areas, which is meters squared. So again, that's meters per second times uh, meters squared. That would be meters cubed per second. But it's also equal to m dot divided by the density. Um, so a lot of times the problems will, will give you, uh, you know, m dot or give you v dot or give you... Uh, it'll give you the density, so you have to sort of differentiate between the mass flow rate and the volume flow rate. Now, how much energy is contained in, 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 a, in a flow like this? It's just given by m dot times the del delta h, which delta h is the en enthalpy. Uh, so it's m dot uh, cp times delta t. So let's take a look at an example. Let's suppose we have... Uh, a heated continuous uh, stainless steel sheet uh, and it's moving at a speed of one centimeter per second. See this is where the book, see here he uses a big V for the and I use a small V. Um, the stainless steel sheet is five millimeters thick and two meters wide and it enters and exits the chamber at 500 K and 300 K respectively. So it comes when it coming in is at 500 K and then going out is at 300 K. We want to find the rate of heat loss um, from the stainless steel. So first of all, we can, uh, you know, we can make some assumptions here. You know, with steady state operating conditions, uh, you know, there's constant properties. We can we can uh, find the average temperature uh, for the stainless steel. It'd be 500 plus 300 divided by two, 400 K. We can look up the uh, specific heat uh, in the appendix uh, table A3. Uh, we find that it's uh, 515 joule kilogram Kelvin. And we can also look up the density, which is 7,900 kilogram cubic meters. So that's one note here is that you're really going to have to have have, uh, have these tables to be able to work some of these problems because a lot of the properties are found in the tables. So to find the uh, mass flow rate, that's the density times the area times the velocity. So we have the density, uh, the area, it's a, re it's a rectangular sheet, length times width times the velocity, so we can calculate the mass flow rate. The rate of heat loss, we can find that from the, the uh, equation for uh, Q dot, M dot uh, CP delta T, so we can plug that in and find, finally find the, the Q dot rate. 
Let's take a look at example 1.3. Here we have heat loss from a uh, duct. Uh, so we have a five meter long section of air heating system. It's uh, 20 centimeters wide and 25 centimeters deep. We have hot air coming in at 100 kilopascals at 60 degrees C, uh, five meters per second coming in and going out is, is going out at 54 degrees C. So here it's um, it's heat loss, right? So so it's, it comes in hotter than it goes it goes out. So we can find the uh, uh, the average temperature. It's 60 plus 54 divided by two. That's 57. So here we can look up the uh, uh, specific heat. Uh, so this one question, you know, if you have a as we talked about before, the specific heat is uh, dependent. Uh, it's a function of temperature. So which which do you use? Do you use 60 when you go into the table or do you use 54? Well, you could use either, but probably the best way is just to take the average and, and go into the table at 57 degrees C and then look up the, uh, the specific heat for that at constant pressure. So we can find Q dot, that's uh, M dot CP delta T. So this is what we want to calculate. Uh, but to, to be able to do that, we have to find a, a few things first. We can find the density uh, because we have the uh, of the inlet because we have the pressure of the inlet. Uh, R is our our, uh, uh, our value for our, our, our uh, gas constant, and then the temperature of the inlet is 60 degrees. Remember, we have to convert that to Kelvin. So the density coming in is 1.046 kilogram per cubic meter. The cross-sectional area of the, the duct, we know what that is. It's just a rectangular duct. So finally, we can calculate the mass flow rate. It's the density times the velocity times the area. So we got the density from the previous slide. The velocity is given and the area we calculated. So we can find M dot. And then finally, we can find the, uh, the heat loss, MC delta T. So here, uh, you know, we have we've calculated uh, uh, how much um, heat loss it is in uh, kilojoules per second. But if we want to calculate how much money we're losing, you know, uh, we can convert that to uh, kilojoules per hour because that's what that's what we're given. We're given uh, uh, the cost per kilowatt hour. So we can the cost is going to be the rate of heat loss, which we just calculated here times the unit cost per per therm uh, well a therm is uh, is given by 105 500 kilojoules and this is a number that you can find in the, the front of your book uh, so we, we take this value for kilojoules per hour multiply it by uh, 1.60 per therm and then one therm is kilo, kilojoules so basically it's it's we've we found the cost per kilojoule hour here uh, the furnace efficiency that's given to be 80 percent so that's point that's point eight so it's costing us about uh, about 10 cents an hour basically uh well about 11 cents an hour uh, that's what we're losing so final pro problem for this lecture we have a, a house that has a floor space of, of 2,000 square feet an average height of nine feet it's at 5,000 feet elevation with a pressure is 12.2 PSIA. The house is at a uniform temperature at 50 degrees C. And now we turn the electric heater on and it, it, it runs until the air temperature rises to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to determine the amount of energy transferred to the air, assuming the house is airtight and thus no air escapes during the heating process. Uh, part B, we want to calculate it when uh, some air escapes and it expands at constant pressure. And finally, we want to determine the cost if the electricity is 0 0.075 cents per kilowatt hour. So again, we can we can uh, we're going to have to go into the table and find what the values are for um, specific heat. So we'll take the uh, 50 plus 70 divided by two, and we'll go into the table at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and find the specific heat at constant pressure. Uh, we can also find CV. Uh, that's equal to CP minus R, so we can actually calculate what that is. 
And here's the tables. I encourage you to go look those values up for yourself. So the volume is the floor area divided by the height. So we can calculate that. We can use the gas law to find the mass, uh, PV over RT. Uh, remember, T here has got to be in uh, absolute, so that's Rankin. So we have to add 460 to the 50 to, to get it to Rankin. So the amount of energy we'll, uh, that's transferred is going to be calculated by MCV delta T. Uh, so M, M we calculated here. Um, the CV we looked up, and delta T is our difference between what we started and what we finished. So we end up with 3,974 BTU. So how much does that cost us? Well, it's just the amount of energy times the cost per, per unit. Uh, so we know how much we used, 0 0.075 kilowatt uh, cents per kilowatt hour, but we have to find what it is in BTU because that's, you know, so we have to convert from a kilowatt hour to BTU. So when you do the calculation, you get about, about nine cents uh, is what it's going to be. So part B wants to do it at constant pressure. So in that case, we're dealing with the, uh, the enthalpy. So what changes? Uh, the mass stays the same. The temperature is the same. The only difference is the, 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 we're using CP instead of CV. So in that case, it's going to be a lot higher. You can see it's, it's about uh, 12, a little over 12 cents. To, uh, to heat it up there in the second case there. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. I encourage you to get started in the problems and, and uh, start working a few problems. If you have any questions, uh, you can email me uh, or uh, uh, and I'll be glad to help you give some hints on some of the problems.